Oh, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> so good to be here again today, people. I hope you guys having a wonderful Shabbat. Uh, wow, okay, all over the world. I hope people are worshiping Yesh Yeshua on Shabbat. I know I have some friends over in Nigeria. Uh, talking to my brother over there, Hebrew guy, Adashi, I hope you're having a wonderful Shabbat today uh, with your uh, congregation. Uh, a lot of people know, uh, soon we'll find out that the Sabbath is a sign for Yeshua's people. So uh, we're going to go ahead now and get through this disclaimer, and then I'm going to go and play a wonderful song from uh, Zima Lavav again, Yeshua being the light of the world. And I hope you will follow the song because the words are on the screen today. So I just got a new uh, video that I saw with the words on the screen. So please uh, enjoy this song. Uh, Yeshua is the light of the world. He absolutely is the light. The only light in all this darkness we're going through in the lands right now, all over the world, the country, America. Uh, we just got a lot of problems going on uh, in, the, in this world right now. quaking and rocking and rolling uh, so we are getting really close to the end of time and I'm so happy we are because I'm ready to go and be with my father I don't know about you but I'm ready to go and be with my father so uh, we're gonna go ahead and play this wonderful song and get into some news today over in Israel news watching Israel uh, watching a lot of different things going on so I will do some Israel news reports from Russia um, and also, uh, we're going to go to and do another mission report. Today, just got it in today from my brother Godfrey over in Kenya. And we're going to get into Randall J. Brewer. Remember the other day I told you I'm coming back and read that about the mouth. The mouth. Okay. What God says, uh, his title. Uh, we're going to go through a lot of that. Uh, read some of that again today. The mouth. About the mouth. Uh, and also, uh, we're going to be covering Isaiah 52. Uh, my husband will join me uh, when we go to do that study and reading of Isaiah 52, not but 15 verses, so get your Bibles out. And also we're going to be uh, ending this video with the Elijah prophecy. Oh my goodness, the Elijah prophecy coming from Mayor Napa, uh, which is very wonderful. I just skimmed it a while ago, and I'm telling you, I asked Father what he wanted me to show and share, and he gave me these things, amazing, turned me to these pages and things. But I'm telling you, we are about to go through some things in this on this planet, and if you don't have Yeshua, oh my goodness, I don't know how you're going to make it. I don't know how you're going to get through it, people. So let's go ahead and play this wonderful song, and then we'll get over to uh, Israel News and some other news. And also, I want to mention one more thing, too, before I go because I don't want to forget about it. But I want you guys to try and go listen to... Uh, wow, this is a guy from way back, uh, my friend there. Uh, did I put him up here? Oh, I don't see him here. Wait, hold on, guys. I don't see him here. Okay, I don't see him here. Oh, yes, it is, right here. Uh, Stephen Dobby Ministries, from way back in 2011, he did a, a, a sermon on all religions... All religions come from Babylon. I want you guys to go and listen to that if you get a chance, okay? But I am going to be uh, showing some other news here, too, coming from uh, the Real GS News. But we'll see some news here in a bit. So let's go ahead and play our song, Zima Lavav, Yeshua is the Light. Okay, let's go ahead and play it. Let me mute it out. Okay, let me mute this. Shines the darkness must flee the dark 
darkness must be from the living word. His light now shines, the darkness must flee. Yeshua is the light of the world. He came to the world, confounding the darkness. His word is a light, a lamp for our feet. He came to the world, confounding the darkness. His word. From the living word, his light now shines, the darkness must flee. Yeshua is the light of the world. Yeshua is the light, the light that drives out the darkness. The darkness must flee from the presence of Hashem. Yeshua is the light.7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donation. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel voices frustration over the international community's approach in doing business with the Ayatollah regime in Tehran. Honduras officially inaugurates its embassy in Jerusalem, becoming the fourth country to do so. The United States is reportedly considering walking away from the previous Trump administration's recognition of Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights. The P5 plus one, which includes the United States, Russia, China, France, Britain plus Germany, are waiting on the Islamic Republic of Iran to take a final decision about returning into compliance with the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or JCPOA, which is the technical term for the 2015 nuclear agreement. In remarks at a joint press conference in Paris, alongside visiting U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, 
French Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Drian highlighted that the toughest phase in the indirect multilateral negotiations taking place in Vienna regarding Tehran's nuclear program has commenced. Sur le dossier iranien, aussi, notre position est claire. Nous attendons des autorités iraniennes qu'elles prennent les dernières décisions sans doute difficiles qui permettront de conclure notre négociation pour aboutir rapidement au retour complet de la mise en œuvre de l'accord de Vienne. On va passer, il y a eu des avancées de fait, et on va passer maintenant aux étapes les plus difficiles. Ça supposera des décisions courageuses et fortes de la part des nouvelles autorités iraniennes. C'est le moment. The negotiations with Iran are currently faced with increased tensions amid failure by the International Atomic Energy Agency to immediately secure yet another subsequent extension of an interim monitoring agreement with Iran of its nuclear facilities, which officially expired yesterday, June the 24th. With that being said, IAEA Director General Rafael Mariano Grossi is currently engaged with the head of Iran's atomic energy organization, Ali Akbal Salehi, in determined efforts to reach an imminent agreement for yet another extension, and a spokesman for the IAEA confirmed that the agency's board of governors would be informed on the progress of the talks. Nevertheless, the lack of such an agreement effectively means that the international community is currently flying blind to Tehran's nuclear activities, and the fact that serious differences with Iran remain regarding a number of key issues raises concrete questions over whether the efforts to revive the JCPOA would ultimately bear fruit. We still have serious differences uh, with Iran with regard to returning to mutual compliance with the, with the JCPOA. Uh, our teams are going back for a seventh round of indirect uh, negotiations uh, in, the, in the coming days. We'll see if we can bridge the differences, uh, but uh, they're real, and um, we, have to, uh, we have to be able to bridge them. I, I would tell you that with regard to the IEA, uh, this remains a serious concern, uh, a concern that we've communicated to, uh, to Iran, and it needs to be, uh, needs to be resolved. If, uh, if Iran continues to uh, spin ever more sophisticated centrifuges uh, at, uh, at higher degrees, um, if it pursues other aspects of its program that were prohibited by the JCPOA, uh, there will come a point, yes, where it will be very hard to return back to the standards set by the JCPOA. Nevertheless, Secretary Blinken stressed Washington's persistent determination to revive the JCPOA, all the while emphasizing that the United States will retain all tools to address the Islamic Republic's malign behavior in the region. Minister Ledrian, on the other hand, underscored the need to ensure that the aggressive behavior of the Islamic Republic becomes part and parcel of the negotiations. An Iran with a nuclear weapon? or with the capacity to produce one on very short order is an Iran that is even more dangerous than it already is, an Iran that can act with even greater impunity when it comes to supporting uh, terrorism, destabilizing the region, um, engaging in proliferation. Uh, so we have a national interest uh, in trying to put the nuclear problem back in the box that it was in under the JCPOA that unfortunately it is now out of. And at the same time in doing that, we will retain all of the necessary tools to uh, deal with uh, Iran's actions in other areas that um, are profoundly dangerous and destabilizing. In fact, I think we'll be in a better position to do that, uh, particularly since we'll be united with our allies uh, and partners uh, on this. Il faudra aussi intégrer euh, la dimension régionale, faire en sorte qu'il y ait euh, un forum de stabilisation de la région. Et il faudra aussi intégrer euh, toute la question des transferts euh, d'armes et la question des diffusions missilières euh, à partir de l'Iran, en articulant la sortie du GCP, enfin, la fin du GCP, l'accord du GCPOA avec euh, ces nouvelles problématiques que vient d'évoquer aussi euh, Tony. Donc nous sommes en phase avec un, un optimisme modéré, mais un optimisme quand même.
Meanwhile, at a graduation ceremony of the Israeli Air Force 182nd Flight Course, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett voiced frustration with the international community over its continued determination to do business with the Islamic Republic of Iran. <laughs> שמוכן להרעיב את עמו שלו לאורך שנים כדי להגיע לתוכנית גרעין צבאית ומשטר שאסור לעשות איתו עסקים. אבל לצערנו זה לא המצב. אנחנו נמשיך להתייעץ עם ידידינו, לשכנע, לדבר, לחלוק מידע ותובנות מתוך כבוד הדדי עמוק. אבל בסופו של דבר את האחריות לגורלנו נשמור בידינו ולא בידי אף אחד אחר. The graduation ceremony, which also marked 40 years since Israel bombed the nuclear installation of the then Iraqi regime of the country's slain dictator Saddam Hussein, was seemingly utilized to draw analogies to Israel's determination to protect itself against any existential threat. השנים עוברות ואויבינו משתנים ומתפתחים. אז עיראק, היום איראן. רמת התחכום והנחישות של הצד השני עלתה. אבל אויבינו יודעים לא מהצהרות אלא ממעשים שאנחנו נחושים פי כמה ומתוחכמים פי כמה, ולא מהססים לפעול כשצריך, בעבר וגם היום. Defense Minister Gantz, who also addressed this ceremony, labeled Israel's Air Force as a so-called insurance policy of the Jewish state's determination to never again be subject to the threat of the Holocaust, at a time when the Ayatollah regime openly asserts that by 2040, the state of Israel will cease to exist. באיראן הפעם ישנו אויב רצחני ומסוכן, הבונה זרועות טרור סביב מדינת ישראל ומבקש להשיג נשק גרעיני על מנת לאיים על ישראל ועל יציבות האזור כולו. אנו עומדים בקשר עם ידידינו האמריקאים על מנת להבטיח את ביטחונה של ישראל. ברגעים אלו ממש נמצא הרמטכ"ל בשליחותנו ודן בנושאים אלו עם מקביליו. בשבוע הבא תמריא אתה, כבוד הנשיא, לפגישה עם נשיא ארצות הברית ביידן, בין השאר כדי להבטיח שקולנו נשמע בסוגיות הקשורות לביטחוננו, לשלום העולם, יציבות האזור וברית המתונים, ובעיקר, בעיקר, ביטחונה של מדינת ישראל. כפי שאמר ראש הממשלה, אם נידרש, נפעל, כפי שפעלנו תמיד, נסיר ונמנע כל איום, בתחבולות, ביוזמה, Jerusalem's top defense official also seized the opportunity to address the situation vis-a-vis -vis the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip, emphasizing that the leadership in the Palestinian enclave has the opportunity to choose the course of its future. אנחנו נחושים. אם בעזה רוצים בשיקום ובפיתוח כלכלי, הגיעו, הגיעה העת שיעשו צעדים בשטח לשמירה על השקט, להפסקת ההתחמשות ולהשבת הבנים הביתה. אנחנו גם נכונים לצעדים מרחיבים כדי לשנות את המציאות לטובת תושבי עזה, אך לא נסבול טרור משום סוג. ולא נשלים עם החזקת בנינו בשבי תוך הפרה בוטה של החוק הבינלאומי. 
Minister Gantz also cited a recent Israeli achievement that will significantly bolster Israel's aerial defensive capabilities. In the last the refer to test concluded earlier this week when the new laser interception system was mounted on an aircraft and from a distance of roughly one kilometer or 0.62 miles successfully intercepted a number of unmanned aerial vehicles. במסגרת הניסויים האלה, שזה שלב ראשון בפיתוח הלייזר האווירי, לקחנו מטוס עם מערכת לייזר מאוד מתקדמת, שיש בה כמובן אופטיקה מאוד מיוחדת ומתקדמת, יש בזה יכולות עקיבה מאוד מאוד מתקדמות, והצלחנו ליירט מספר כטמ"מים במרחק של מעל קילומטר. כל הכטמ"מים הופלו ונפלו לים. למעשה, אנחנו פעם ראשונה מצליחים לייצר יכולת כזאת במדינת ישראל, ואולי בעולם כולו. אנחנו מתכוונים להמשיך בפיתוח הזה, וזה מעלה לנו את רמת הביטחון, ההישגים שהשגנו עד כה, ולהביא את זה למצב שתהיה לנו מערכת לייזר אווירית רבת עוצמה, שבעזרתה נוכל ליירט גם כטמ"מים, גם רקטות, וכל אמצעי אחר שאיים על מדינת ישראל. Hello everybody, this is Paul from Off Grid Desert Farming with Paul and Adrian. This is June the 25th, 2021. So we have some breaking news. This, um, this has just started. Russia uh, has just started some naval drills uh, in the Mediterranean. The drills involve five warships, including the missile cruiser Moskva, the frigates Admiral Essen, Admiral Makarov, and the submarines Stari Oskol and Rostodon. So what has happened is these drills were quickly planned. The, uh, the, U, um, the United Kingdom aircraft carrier just happens to be in the Mediterranean. So this is uh, Russia's main ship right here, one of their big old battle cruisers. It says Russian naval ships and aircraft have kicked off joint drills in the Mediterranean Sea, Russian Defense Ministry reported on Friday. On June the 25th this year, the Russian Navy Standing Mediterranean Task Force an aircraft of Russian Aerospace Force have kicked off joint drills in the eastern Mediterranean. Russian combat planes have redeployed from Russia to Syria to participate in the joint drills. As part of the drills, a pair of MiG-31 aircraft capable of employing the latest Kinzhal hypersonic missiles with the IL-38 anti-submarine warfare planes have performed their flights from airfields in Russia to the Russian Air Base in the Syrian Arab Republic. Now, what has happened is that the uh, the Queen Elizabeth United Kingdom aircraft carrier with 10 U.S.-based F-35 fighter jets and their strike group are in the eastern Mediterranean. So I just reported on that incident uh, in the Black Sea where the British destroyer violated Russian uh, territorial waters. And that incident could have involved uh, uh, live fire between both ships. But uh, fortunately, the British ship exited the area. So Russia is pretty mad right now. They have threatened that if Britain does that again in the Black Sea, they will sink the ship. So in response to all this going on in the past 24 hours, Russia has announced these drills uh, to counter the current drills going on in the eastern Mediterranean with the British aircraft carrier strike group. So this could go crazy or it could just be war drills, folks. So we're going to be doing our live breaking news update tomorrow with all the information. There's a lot of information coming in uh, about what has happened in the last 24 hours, but I just wanted to give you a sneak preview that these drills right now are ongoing today. And the big NATO war drill starts in the Black Sea on the 28th. So they're going to be drilling uh, 30 NATO warships in the Black Sea opposite uh, the Russians' Black Sea fleet. So I don't know if we're going to have fireworks, folks, but we're going to explore that uh, tomorrow. 
sometime on our breaking news update. So just remember, folks, things are heating up. Jesus Christ is coming back soon. Don't be caught dead without him. Bye-bye. going on my name is Louis. today is june 25th 2021 and welcome to the grand supreme news channel before i start guys give this video a big thumbs up and share this video i want to show you the title to this article now it says here developing seattle and portland may smash all-time temperature records this is big brace yourself west coast brace yourself this is going to be record-breaking numbers this thing is going to cause a lot of events. There's a possibility that people might feel ILL. -L. And, you know, I got to be careful with the things I say in this platform nowadays. But, man, man, famines and pestilence in various places, mega drought impacting the West Coast. This is all biblical stuff. And once again, guys, these are the avias that have been acting like little demons lawlessness all over the streets this is the area where it all started people just breaking you know what and i do believe you know i do believe that you know a lot of this is god shaking the area the punishment uh which again you know god does punish those who who are walking in sins path and accepting this lawlessness into their hearts desires into their hearts and accepting and believing and feeling great about you know doing the devil's work god shakes the heaven and the earth to remind us hey wake up you're being deceived by the world you know what so um once again guys a lot of people do believe that this is possibly harp man you know what made can that be true? Absolutely. Absolutely. It could be true. Guys, you got to understand this world is being run by also electronic all over, even Space Force and all that type of stuff. I mean, you wouldn't believe the technology that is being put out there. And yeah, it could be, you know, weather changes and creating all these type of stuff. So it's a combination of so many things going on here and is impacting this kingdom. So many people are not prepared and I got to say, guys, if you're not prepared, again, prepare now, uh, spiritually, physically, and mentally. Because this thing, it, look, just read this here, all right? Historic heat, Saturday through Wednesday. And look at the, uh, again, look at the numbers, all right? Monthly and all-time Record highs challenged. Risk of heat-related illness. You know what? Enhanced fire risk little or no rainfall <sighs> like i say guys there's going to be a lot of uh events coming starting tomorrow before i start guys give this video a big okay guys i just want to say something real quick here i'm going to go on over here and show a video coming from uh kenya Real quick, uh, my missionary, one of my really wonderful guy, uh, Godfrey, do a very lot of hard work uh, in missionary field. So I'm happy to see his video out today. So I'm going to be sharing that. And then I'm going to get into Randall J. Brewer. And then we're going to get into the Bible. So in that order. So I just wanted to let you know uh, how far we are in this video here. But... I want to really bring this up right now to um, this lady, like I said, I, sh I shared this video with a lot of people last night of missionaries. Most likely I shared the missionary, uh, this video with the missionaries last night. Uh, why can't I find that now? <laughs> um, wow, well, I don't see that. Oh, here. here. This video, oh my goodness, uh, Dr. Helen Rosa Vera, uh, Vera, if I'm saying that correctly, she worked as a missionary in Congo back in 1953 to 1973. And this is an 18-minute video, and I don't think I'm going to play it today on here, but I want you guys to please go and watch that one along with the other one I told you to watch about uh, Babylon. Uh, I think it's coming from Stephen Davi. 
Uh, so I want you guys to try to watch this one as well. I did send it out to all my missionaries last night. It was a wonderful video about her testimonies uh, when she was out doing missionary work in the Congo. So, and it's true, one particular word she did mention in here is God asked missionary this question. And he was asking a question like, uh, and I don't know if I should play part of it and just show you what she was saying, but they ask, he asked a question. It's true that we should be asking our question today. Uh, when troubles come our way and problems come our way, we shouldn't have to bail out and leave God. We should just stay with God, knowing that he is God, and that he will be with us even until the end. And she was talking about in this video how, you know, he told, uh, he asked the question, that what if you don't see any signs? What if you don't see any miracles? What if you don't see anything? Are you still going to walk away from God? Do you know God is God all by himself? He do things in his own time and he do things when he want to do them. He do things to, uh, he, you know, he working with us, trying to equip us to be who we need to be in these times. So a lot of things may not go exactly like you want it to go. I've been getting all kind of emails this week about family problems, family problems, children problems, grown children problems, you know, legal problems, uh, court problems, just all kind of problems. But do that mean just because he's not working on your behalf, you think God's not working on your behalf, you're going to chunk him out. I'm just going to play just a very little bit of this video. And then I'm going to get over to, um, I'm going to go on over here to uh, Randall J. Brewer. And then we'll get into the Bible. So I just want to, oh, the missionary, oh, the missionary. After this, the missionary report from Godfrey. Then we're going to get into Randall J. Brewer. Then the Bible. I'm sorry. Okay. So let me go ahead and uh, mute this out real quick. I suppose there's a momentary thought of saying, why God? But immediately he spoke into the situation and he said, don't ask why. Um, I think I grew up with the phrase, is it worth it? Everything, everything in life had to be worth it. If uh, dad said to me as a child, uh, you don't touch the kitchen knife. And I'd look at the kitchen knife and i think, why not? <laughs> and then i think, uh -uh. Dad said, don't, and I knew my father. <laughs> so it wasn't worth trying it out. So everything was, is, is it worth it? Is it worth it? And I think when the, the awful moments came in the rebellion and, and the sense, is it really worth this? And you almost felt, no, this has gone too far. I can't, I can't accept it. It seemed that the price was too high to pay. And, and then God seemed to say, change the question. He, he has to keep on saying this to me. Quite recently, he said it again. It's not, is it worth it? It's, am I worthy? Mm -hmm. Is he worthy? It almost sounds like saying, is it worth it? Is he worthy? Mm -hmm. And it just turns the whole thing round. And instead of looking at the price I think I have to pay, is thinking of the privilege he wants to give. And always the answer is, yes, he is worthy. The fact that Almighty God is willing to apparently use us in any small ways. Uh, and he's been so good to me in the, I mean, that's 1964, which is what I can't add, 45 years ago. Uh, and in those 45 years, he's shown so often in little ways, in bigger ways, people I've been able to encourage and help to realize that rape, why are we women, we feel rape's the last word of horror. Uh, and we, we don't want to talk about it, we don't think about it, we certainly don't speak about it in public or on the television screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yet, why? It, it's only, it's external. You're sinned against, it's not your sin. It can't touch your spirit, it's only your body. Uh, and uh, suddenly to realize, that, that's true, that's true. But it can't get into my mind or soul, I, I'm me. And um, I've been able to help so many girls to look at things like that uh, and to, to pray together with them and say, I've used this phrase, can you thank me for trusting you? I, the girl after girl, I said, can you thank? There was a lovely lady in, 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 um, in Australia uh, her, her two-year-old son had been drowned in a family swimming pool mm. uh, and she said Christian, so-called friends, had said to her, praise the Lord. And I was angry. I thought, how could you say that to a little lady who's lost her son? Uh, and, and then she said, they said, if I can't praise the Lord, then I must have sinned in my heart. By then I was so angry. I thought, this is not the way God would speak to a dear mother. And I, I said to God, God, tell me right now, what do I say to this woman? And all that came into my mind was the memory of this dreadful night in Congo. 
I thought, what's that got to do with it, Lord? Nothing to do with it at all. And then he gave me these words. Can you thank me for trusting you with this experience, even if I never tell you why? And although I hold this totally different situation, I shared this with this lady, her name was Valerie, and, I told, and little by little she came through. We knelt together we were in a big marquee tent, and she thanked God for trusting her, even if he never told her why. I met her three or four years later. I was back in Australia taking meetings, and she came up to me on a Sunday night in a Baptist church. She says, you don't remember me, do you? I said, I do, Val. I've prayed for you every day for, since I last met you. Oh. Well, she said, if, uh, she shared with her husband what I'd said to her, and he couldn't take it. And yet, a few months later, a child in the a house down the same road they lived in ran out of the house and was killed by a passing car. The parents were not Christians. In fact, they were of another faith. And she said, we went and comforted the parents. And because they saw how we had taken the death of our son, they allowed us to comfort them. And over these four years, we've had the joy of leading first one and then the other to put their trust in the Lord Jesus mm. Christ. And now we know why God took our son home. And these sort of ways, I can look back and say, now I know. We, he doesn't have to tell us why. Sometimes probably doesn't tell us why. And yet Helen, Dr. Helen, God so powerfully allowed you to see in the horror in yes. 1964, Yes. not just why, but to reveal to you that what was happening was an answer to your own prayers That's right. for these people that you had served and longed to reach with the gospel for 12 years to a barrier. Yes. How did God use your suffering to turn that around? Okay, you have to go and listen to it, the rest of it, people. Okay, very good video. But I'm going to go and over here to uh, my friend Godfrey here from Kenya. And then we're going to get into uh, Randall J. Brewer and the Bible. So let me go ahead and do that right now. Uh, where is my friend there? Uh, oh, um, man, let me find that here quickly, people. Hope I didn't X this out. Okay, here it is. Let me go ahead and mute this out again.
Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just, I didn't know that my friend Old Joe's in there too. I hadn't seen this video. It just came out this morning. Uh, Old Joe's from Nigeria, and then you have Ghana in there a little bit too, from uh, God, um, Gabriel over in Ghana. So I love these missionaries. We need to always support them, pray for them. Uh, I was just laughing at uh, Godfrey because he's becoming like a example for all the other missionaries to get Godin's going, to get Godin's going. I remember when I first told him about getting Godin's going, and he was just praying, and he finally got the land and got the got the oxen out and all these things, and now his corn and all his stuff is growing so beautifully. So it's really a good example that we need to train others to work for themselves, do for themselves. Because that's the best way, people. We need to be working for each other, helping one another. But I love it to see the missionaries growing uh, gardens and things of that nature because it's a famine coming. A famine is coming. So we're going to go on over here now to Randall J. Brewer. And uh, I, I just love this message, Brown, Randall, so much. So I'm going to have to come back and try to read much of it as I can. I'm going to have to go all the way out. You're just going to hear my voice, okay? But we're going to go down and read the rest of this. I know the other day I stopped at Words Matter, I think. Words Matter. And we're going to go on down here and read some more here of this wonderful message about what God says. And, uh, and you know, I'm just going to read the first part of this to give you an idea. But it says here, you are a born-again believer, but still you have an evil tongue that you cannot tame, okay? And daily you struggle with this problem. What can you do? And Paul had a similar struggle. And so I know that nothing good lives in me, that in my sinful nature, I want to do what is right, but I can't. This is exactly what James is saying about the tongue. So we're going to continue reading some more about the tongue. Oh, so I'm going to go ahead and start right here. God has given you freedom. Okay, it's true. God has given us freedom, people. So I'm going to read that again, and let's go on down and read about three columns of it. And it says here, God has given you the freedom to believe and say whatever you choose. Because of that nature, because of that freedom, if you say and allow something, if you say and, and allow something, God will allow the same thing. Those who want to live a good life, those who want to grow up spiritually, need to learn to say the same things God says. Hebrews 3.1 says, Jesus is the apostle and high priest of our confession. The word confession literally means to speak the same thing. You quote in scripture and saying the same thing God says, give Jesus something to work, in your, work with in your life. With this understanding, the word of God should have special meaning to you. So important is the word that Psalms 138 says, For you have magnified your word above all your name. God respects his word more than anything else. Jesus said in Matthew 4, 4, Men, Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. When you read the word and confess what it says, God is able to make it come alive in your heart. This causes faith to come, for faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. 2 Corinthians 4, 13 says, But since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed, and therefore I spoke, we also believe, and therefore speak. Speaking the word is the only proof that you believe the word. Faith is born in the heart, but it is expressed with the mouth. What you say gives expression to your faith. Romans 10.10 10 says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. It's the power of declaration that makes faith work. It's the confession of the word that renders the enemy silent. At the temptation in the wilderness, Jesus confessed the word, and the devil departed from him. Luke 4.13. Jeremiah 23.29 says, is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? At the burning bush, God called Moses to go to Egypt. Moses was hesitant, and God said to him, Now therefore go, and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. 
Exodus 4.12. Go read your Bible and learn what God is teaching you to say. God never speaks an idle word. Listen to that, people. Absolutely. This is why I get real offended by curse words and things like that. Don't want to even hear it. I mean, really. I mean, God never spoke an idle word. And neither should us. We shouldn't speak these kind of words. God never speaks an idle word and neither should you. Negative and idle words can hold you in bondage and stop you from fulfilling your destiny. What you say matters. If you say and allow something, God will allow it also. He gave you a free will and he won't override your confession. He'll respond to the words that come out of your mouth. Consider Matthew 10, 32, 33. Jesus said, Therefore, whosoever confesses me before men, him I also will confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whosoever denies me before men, him will I also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Notice that what Jesus says to the Father is based on what you say. If you confess him, if you confess him, he'll confess you. If you deny him, he'll deny you. Matthew 12, 37 says, for by your words you will be justified and by your words you will be condemned. It is a sobering thought to realize that your words have a greater influence in your life than the words of anybody else, including God. Be careful what you say because Luke 19, 22 says, out of your mouth, out of your own mouth, out of your own mouth, I will judge you. And I'm going to stop there today and I'm going to come back and finish this up, Randall. Really, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful, wonderful word that we all need to know about and hear right now because people are getting frustrated in the world, getting angry in the world, uh, you know, and everybody's mouth just going off, going off, going off, you know, and we need to watch what we say because words do matter. I love this, Rando. I love it so much. So we're going to go on over here to the Bible right now. I'm waiting on my husband to come join me. So uh, let's go on over to the Bible right now. So we're going to do that right now because Tom is going. I think I'm already at 50 minutes. So let's go ahead on here to the Bible. It's not but a 15 verse uh, chapter. And so I just love it so much. For You know I love this. For in a day in, in for a day in that courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Hallelujah. So we know we need to be understanding how powerful God is. And uh, let me go ahead and open my screen up again. But I really know that the Father loves us so much. And we need to be loving him and, uh, you know, doing what he wants us to do. I know it's not easy. Not easy for any of us. The devil all in our face every minute. We have to sometimes uh, just rebuke him and say, get behind me, Satan. But we need to really watch our mouth, really watch our mouth more now because you can get yourself in trouble with your bad mouth, uh, anger, rage is going on on the highways, people getting locked up over their mouth, over their mouth, over anger. So I, I, I just love that message so much. So I'm a, hi, honey, how you doing? Hello, Happy Shabbat. Everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. <laughs> So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, do the Bible and let you guys go and enjoy the rest of Shabbat. So uh, this is coming from Isaiah um, 52, and he's going to read from the Son of Man Bible version. I usually like the Amplified version, but you go ahead and we're going to read from this today. So I hope that you guys got your Bibles out, and let's go ahead and pray. Father, please be with us as we read your word to the people. We know time is short. We know we need to hear every encouraging words from you that we can hear right now, Father. We need to have it digested. We need to have it saturated, or saturated in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls, in our spirit, because the world is so full of evil, so much evil. So we're asking you to please help us to be holy as you are holy. Let your Holy Spirit come be with us now as we read your word. We ask it in the mighty name of Yeshua Messiah. So go ahead and read. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Start chapter Isaiah 52. Mm -hmm. Awake, awake. Mm -hmm. Put on your strength, Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, Jerusalem, set apart city. For never again will the uncircumcised or the unclean enter you. Shake yourself off from the dust. Arise and sit, Jerusalem. Take off the chain from your neck, captive daughter of Zion. For this is what Yahuwah says. You were sold for nothing, and you will be redeemed without money. For this is what Lord Yahuwah says. In the beginning, my people went down into Egypt to live temporarily. Assyria has oppressed them recently. 
Now what do I have here, declares Yahuwah, seeing that my people are taken away for nothing? Those who rule over them wail, declares Yahuwah, and my name is slandered continually all day long. <laughs> well, that, not much change there. <laughs> Therefore my people will know my name. They will know in that day that I am the one who says, yes, it is I. Oh, hallelujah. Do you have something to say? Mm -mm. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of the messenger who brings the gospel, who announces peace, who bears good tidings, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your divine one reigns. Hallelujah. We should be all shouting from the mountaintops, mm -hmm. but... Oh, that Yeshua's coming back soon, and we should get our acts together. Get our acts together. Go ahead. Him. Listen, your watchmen raise their voices. Together they shout for joy, for they will see every eye of theirs. Yahuwah's return to Zion. Break out into joyful singing together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For Yahuwah has comforted his people. He has redeemed, redeemed Jerusalem. Yahuwah has bared his set-apart arm in the sight of all the ethno-linguistic nations. All the earth will see the salvation of our Divine One. Leave, leave, go out from there, touch nothing unclean, leave from her midst. Purify yourselves, you who carry the vessels of Yahuwah. We need to purify ourselves, be holy as he is holy. We need to really work on it. Go to the Father, he's the only one who can help you. Nobody else can help you. You know, you can pray and you can get pre people to pray for you. A lot of people want people to pray for them. I love people to pray for me. I do, but I pray for myself, okay? You have to pray for yourself. You have to seek Yeshua for yourself. You have to stand on your own bottom, as my grandfather used to say, every top stand on their own bottom. We need to know it's all about us individually. We're not going to heaven in groups, people. It's, you need to be working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Go ahead, go ahead. For you will not go out in a rush, nor will you leave in a panic. For Yahuwah will go before you, and the Mighty One of Israel will be your rear guard. Look, my servant will act wisely. He will be high and lifted up, and he will be exalted. As many were horrified at you, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any man, and his form no longer looked like anything human. Even so, my servant will sprinkle in expiation many ethno-linguistic nations, and kings will shut their mouths because of him. For that which they had not been told, they will see, and that which they had not heard, they will understand. We will understand. Like the lady just said in the video, I want you guys to go finish watching this woman who went to the Congo. And she was saying, Yeshua, don't give us a why all the time. You know, it's like, well, God didn't do this and God didn't do that. And he didn't answer me and he didn't do this. I think I was talking to my, one of my grandchildren about that one time. Well, God didn't answer me. Well, you know, sometimes it ain't meant to be answered right now. It ain't meant to be answered today. Sometimes we have to wait. Sometimes we have to pray. Sometimes we have to hold on and then wait for the reward. Because he said reward. He will reward us openly. Sometimes we just have to wait and trust and wait. That's all I can tell you. I've had a lot of moments in my life where I wonder why so long. I'm still wondering about some things right now. But if it's God knows what's best for us, people, he knows what's best for us. So we should believe in him and trust in him only in the midst of the trials and the tribulations and whatever coming your way. Start learning to trust in him. Trust and obey. Trust and obey as the song always say. Trust and obey. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Uh, time is going. Uh, we're going to go on over here to Maranatha. Maranatha. And uh, listen to his word. And then we're going to go for the day. Because uh, it's really important, the Elijah prophecy, the Elijah prophecy. So you can, we can go ahead and listen to that, and then we'll let you guys go, okay? I'm muted. January 14, the Elijah prophecy. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. Malachi 4, 5 and 6. Those who are to prepare the way for the second coming of Christ are represented by faithful Elijah. As John came in the spirit of Elijah to prepare the way for Christ's first advent, the work of John the Baptist and the work of those who in the last days go forth in the spirit and power of Elijah to arouse the people from their apathy 
are in many respects the same. His work is a type of the work that must be done in this age. Christ is to come the second time to judge the world in righteousness. John separated himself from friends and from the luxuries of life. The simplicity of his dress, a garment woven of camel's hair, was a standing rebuke to the extravagance and display of the Jewish priests and of the people generally. His diet, purely vegetable of locusts and wild honey, was a rebuke to the indulgence of appetite and the gluttony that everywhere prevailed. The great subject of reform is to be agitated, and the public mind is to be stirred. Temperance in all things is to be connected with the message to turn the people of God from their idolatry, their gluttony, and their extravagance in dress and other things. The self-denial, humility, and temperance required of the righteous, whom God especially leads and blesses, is to be presented to the people in contrast to the extravagant, health-destroying habits of those who live in this degenerate age. God has shown that health reform is as closely connected with the third angel's message as the hand is with the body. As John the Baptist called their attention to the Ten Commandments, so are we to give with no uncertain sound the message, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come. With the earnestness that characterized Elijah the prophet and John the Baptist, we are to strive to prepare the way for Christ's second advent. Hallelujah, 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 people. Hallelujah. I can't wait for the trumpet sound. I'll tell you, I hope I'm ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. We need to all be ready. Working towards that. Because this world will suck you in. All this materialism and I got to have this house. I got to have this new car. I got to have this. I got to do this. Your eyes get so focused on the world. Your mind is not on Yeshua. And he can come any moment, any, any time when the, you know things are really speeding up before us here. These people in Miami had no idea that was going to happen. No idea. And so, you know, that's how quick it's going to happen when Yeshua comes. We have no idea how quick it'll happen. So we need to be ready. We need to be ready. We don't know when we could die. We can go out and not come back. We don't know. Keep your heart right before the Father today. Keep your heart Amen. right. Being uh, born again if you haven't received him as your personal Savior. I wish I had a big church where I could baptize people, but you have to go in your own cities and find someone to baptize you. But you need to do that if you need to do that. And get baptized and give your life to him completely and walk with him in the spirit because it's going to be so much worse as these months roll by. We need to just be ready at all times. Get ready day and night using spiritual welfare prayers. Uh, you need spiritual welfare prayers, you can write me. I will send you a whole book of them, okay? A PDF file that I've been using for many years on this channel. Uh, this brother wrote the book free of charge. Want everybody to have it, share it, whatever. But I'm telling you, we need to be keeping these these things at breast abreast before us because I don't know when they can knock on my door and say, Marnie, you got to come with us. I don't know. I don't know. I just know that we don't know from one day to the next what can happen. So we need to just trust in Messiah, trust in Him at all times. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this video, people. It's an hour and one minute. So I'm going to go ahead and end. Uh, we're going to go ahead and thank you guys for all the... Uh, I'll play this little okay. video first. Okay, hold again. on. I haven't okay. played this in a while. Okay. Supporting your local church should be easy and hassle-free, even, even when you're not at service. service. No cash? No checkbook? No problem. Meet Tithely, the solution that goes where you go. Using our free smartphone app, you can give to your church whether you're in service, on vacation, sick at home, or any other place in the world. Simply download the app, enter your credit card or checking account information, enter the amount, set where you want to give, and click Give. You'll receive an email confirmation of your gift. You're done and set up for the next donation. With Tithely, you can give recurring gifts or give one time. Wallet free, super fast, secure. Download the app now from the App Store for iOS or Android. Tithely, the simplest way to give to your local church. All right. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and uh, end this video now with uh, thanking you guys for all your offerings to help the homeless, the offerings, the widows, 
those that need admission fields may Yahuwah richly bless each and every one of you uh, and also new donation another do, new he just went over this uh, new donation option so I hope you've seen the video I'm just gonna scroll on down so uh, we must know that we also have the cash app uh, we are also now in the cash app on your mobile device our cash our uh, cash tag, tag cash. is dollar sign FMCMI please add 2.75 percent to your donation to help cover the bank processing fees uh, you can donate uh, on our bump card uh, you can also go there on your digital phone and do that as well uh, pause and uh, and then we got another one here at uh, fmcmi.org on our regular website uh, so you can't really miss giving if you want to give we really appreciate your offerings uh, marna.camway at gmail.com at paypal you can mail in your donations as many of you do fill my cup ministries post office box 414 canyon city colorado 81215 and also shipping address if you want to ship anything to us in a box you know what i mean shipping uh fill my cup ministries 1501 main street number 414 canyon city colorado 81212 so we just want to thank you guys for watching today uh we're going to go ahead and let you enjoy uh, the rest of your shabbat uh, um so we're going to say shabbat shalom and uh you guys enjoy the rest of your shabbat and i know i had some other things here i wanted to bring up uh oh we're going to pray okay that's what it is we're going to pray uh so we're going to go ahead and pray now and then we're going to let you guys go you want to pray for me oh sure mm -hmm. father we love you thank you so much we just thank you for everyone who gets to view the videos father mm -hmm. and get to share in this ministry father just help us mm -hmm. to continue to follow you we thank you for being out in front of us and being behind us as our rear guard. We thank you for covering us with your Ruach, washing us in the blood of Yeshua, cleanse our hearts and our minds. And thank you for healing us and all our workers, Father. Everybody needs to trust you for their health, especially yeah. these days yeah. as we walk in dangerous times with all kinds of pestilence and disease all over the planet. Father, help us to trust you for our health, our well-being, and we bless you and we give you all the praise and the glory Hallelujah. in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. What a wonderful God we serve, people. What a wonderful God we serve. I hope you're serving him today as well. So, okay, so I'm going to go now, and we're going to just say Shabbat Shalom. I love you so much. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. So I love you guys so much. Shabbat Shalom. Bye-bye.